So basically, the person who has to be appointed as a governor, he should not be a member of the parliament or state legislature. Good morning, students. Welcome back to Plutus IS and uh, welcome back to 95 days prelims challenge. So this is our 11th day. Uh, till now, we have completed uh, 10 topics. Uh, I hope that you have gone through all the 10 videos. And I also, I also hope that you have gaining some valuable or important uh, information through this uh, series of lectures. And I hope that it will be helpful in uh, performing in much more better way uh, in the upcoming prelims examination. So, right. So, today we will go and see the uh, topic about the governor. <laughs> uh, today is our 11th day. So, uh, the topic of governor is also important right there have been several questions asked from the topic of governor so it is mostly be similar similar to president presidents president uh, whatever we have discussed in the president so most of the aspects will be similar to president because the procedures uh, whatever the procedures are there uh, for the president those procedures will also apply to the position of the governor. So most of the procedural aspects or when it comes to the powers and the functions uh, of the governor, they will be on similar, uh, they will be on similar uh, lines to that of president. So try, try and uh, try to catch this aspect and uh, try to have a comparative study between the president and uh, the governor when you, uh, when you try. So try to compare those things the aspects associated with the president and the governor so in this way you can also find out the differences and uh, in the prelims examiners uh, examination also the questions also asked in similar way uh, comparing the position of the president and the governor so uh, if you study in this way that will be more beneficial to you right so uh, we will start our discussion so in the beginning, we will see the important articles related to the, uh, the position or uh, the office of the governor. So article, first important article, article 153. So governors, this says about the, uh, about the governors of the state. So it establish, establishes the position of governor. And uh, it says that, the article says that there shall be a governor in the state. So there shall be a governor for each state. This is what the article 153 says. Next article is article 154, executive powers of the state. So the article says that it confers, the particular article confers the executive powers on the governor. So the executive powers of the state, the executive powers of the state are conferred on the governor. So similarly, uh, the executive powers of the union, those are conferred on the president. So try to have this, uh, try to uh, realize this similarity. Next one is appointment of the governor. So it outlines the appointment of the governor, vesting the appointment power in the president of India. So basically, president has the power to appoint the governor. Right. Article 156. It says that it specifies the tenure of the governor. So generally, in general times, the tenure of the governor is five years. However, uh, he can be, he or she can be reappointed or he or she can be removed before the completion of tenure also. So in this way, the governor, the office of the governor has very little very little security of tenure. Security of tenure. So we uh, later in this uh, lecture, we will understand the implication, major implications that are arising because of the lack of security of tenure for the office of the governor. Right. Next important article, article 157, qualifications for appointment. So the particular article uh, delineates the qualifications that are 
uh, that a particular person po- should be possessing to become a uh, governor so it also includes non membership in parliament and state legislature so basically the person who has to be appointed as a governor he should not be a member of the parliament or state legislature so if he is being appointed he has to forego his membership in the any particular house if he or she is a is a member next is article 158 conditions of governor's office so it for, set forth the conditions for the office of the governor highlighting non accountability to state legislature so basically the governor is not accountable to the state legislature uh, basically the governor is accountable to the president of india right try to find out or remember this difference this important point so basically the governor is account- accountable to president of india we also say that the governor is the agent of the center at the state level right similarly the governors uh, the governor will hold the office i mean uh, hold the office during the pleasure of the president so all these aspects make the governor to uh, accountable to the president of india next is article 159 oath and affirmation by the government various oaths that have to be uh, taken by the governor it is mentioned in the article 159 next is article 160 discharge of the functions of the governor so it empowers the president to appoint a governor to discharge the functions of another state's governor or represents the president represents the president in a state when deemed necessary so basically what this article is saying it is saying uh, a governor uh, who is appointed to a particular state that governor can also be temporarily appointed as the governor of another state so there can be a common governor for two, one or two or more states basically this is uh, what is conveyed by this particular article particular article 160 so we can see many number of examples where one governor has been one common uh, common governor has been appointed to uh, two or more states so cases may be like one one particular person can be appointed as a governor to uh, one state and uh, as a lieutenant governor to another union territory for example recently the uh, mrs uh, tamilasai soundara rajan she is the governor of telangana so she is also Uh, given the duty of governorship of pondicherry or puducherry right so these facilities are there the governor can be appointed as a governor i mean for more than one states this is what what is basically conveyed by article 160 next is article 161 pardoning powers of the governor so similar to the president the governor is also having pardoning powers of reprieves respites and remissions of punishment so basically whatever the i mean similar to the president's powers the governor also has some powers when it comes to convictions so there is a difference try to remember that when it comes to court martial only the president can exercise those powers but not the governor so try to have this difference try to notice this difference next is article 163 discretionary powers of the governor so this is very very chapter when it comes to the office of the governor uh it is a very very important position uh we also try to see the reasons why the governor has been interested with lot of discretionary powers and also at the same time this is al- also the reason for controversy the reason for controversies so discretionary powers means uh, there is freedom for governor to take decisions on his own uh, the i mean basically the governor has to work uh, based on the aid and advice of the council of ministers headed by the chief minister in normal circumstances so there are some uh, special occasions where the governor uses his discretion so it led to lot of controversies and there are lot of challenges uh, we will also see those challenges and we also see the areas where the governor can 
or has to exercise his discretion and uh, in the last we will, we will also see the uh, recommendations of two important committees to reg uh, to overcome or to address these particular issues so right these are some of the important articles related to the office of the governor right next we will understand the powers of the governor so basically the powers exercised by the governor can be divided or we can study them under executive powers legislative powers discretionary powers emergency powers and financial powers so i try to classify them under these heads so basically <coughs> we try to understand the powers of the governor under five categories right executive powers uh, the important and the main powers so <coughs> appointment of chief ministers and council of uh, appointment of chief minister and council of ministers so basically the governor appoints the chief minister so generally the practice is uh, the chief minister the particular candidate uh, appointed as the chief minister who is the leader of the majority party in the assembly assembly so leader of majority party majority party in the state legislative assembly legislative assembly so you can notice this is similar to the appointment of prime minister by the president at the central level right next is the governor also appoints other ministers council of ministers based on the advice of the chief minister so basically the governor appoints the chief minister and based on the advice of the chief minister the governor appoints the other council of minister so try to remember this point also this is also similar to the exercise or practice at the central level next is appointment of advocate general so as you all know there will be advocate general basically he is the law officer he advises the government state government on uh issues related to law so at the central level a similar office is there that is attorney general the attorney general is appointed by the president of india and here the advocate general he is appointed by the governor of the state next is execution and enforcement of laws all executive actions or uh, laws of the state government are taken in the name of the governor so he uh, all the actions executive actions are taken on the name of the governor so the governor ensures the enforcement of state laws and policies so these are the executive powers of the governor now let's try and understand the legislative powers of the governor so legislative powers are one important power is summoning and proroguing the sessions of the state legislature so right the governor similar to the president these powers are uh, the president is also having similar powers uh, the governor also have the similar powers so the governors have the authority to summon and prorogue the uh, sessions of the legislature legislature state legislature he also have the power to dissolve dissolve the state legislative assembly so when state legislative assembly is dissolved a fresh elections have to be conducted right so basically this function is exercised by the governor only on the advice of the chief minister right basically this power particular power will be exercised by the governor <coughs> on the advice of the chief minister of the state next is addressing the state legislature the state legislature uh, the governor addresses the state state legislature the uh, in the beginning of every year which means the budget session so every budget session which begins in the uh, the beginning of the year this uh, budget session will be addressed by the governor the address outlines the government's policies and the prior priorities for the coming year so basically we call this as budget session similarly when fresh elections elections are conducted and the house is meeting for the first time 
then also the house starts with the the session starts with the address of the governor address of the governor so try to remember this aspect also next we will understand the discretionary powers yeah i told this is very very important aspect and also source of criticism of the office of the governor there are lot of controversies associated with the discretionary powers of the governor right first discretionary power is appointment of chief minister in hung assembly so when no party is garner has garnered majority complete majority right complete majority when there is absent of complete majority in the state state assembly and no party is wielding a clear majority the prime minister the governor can use his her, her discretion to appoint the chief minister so basically here he should he or she should make sure that the person who can gain the uh, majority i mean support of the majority number of uh, mlas uh, members of legislative assembly the governor should try and appoint that person as the chief minister so this should be the ideal practice but unfortunately this is not uh, being taken place and there are uh, lot of political issues coming into the play, coming into place and it led to lot of controversies right next is dismissal of a government the governor has the discretionary power to dismiss a government in the state if it loses loses confidence of the majority of the state legislative assembly so yesterday during uh, discussing the legislature we had we have understood that we are following a system of parliamentary democracy or parliamentary system of governments parliamentary system of government both at the center level and at the state level so basically here is the council of ministers is accountable to accountable to lower house so here state legislative assembly so the council of ministers uh, will stay in power as long as they have the support of the lower house which means uh, they have the support of the uh, state legislative assembly so whenever the council of ministers loses the support of the state legislative assembly the governor can dismiss that government however the <coughs> proving the support uh, i mean the place where uh, the governor can call the meeting of the state legis legislative assembly to for conducting confidence or no uh, no confidence motion or confidence motions so there are lot of problems have arisen in the past so it led to also controversy lot of controversies right next is recommendation of the uh, president's rules uh, this comes under emergency powers next we understand the emergency powers of the governor so one important aspect is the governor can recommend the president imposition of the president's rule we also call it as state emergency state emergency so this power is granted to governor and the this discretion is granted uh, through the constitution itself so earlier discretionary power, discretionary powers whatever we have discussed those are situational discretionary powers right situational means they are arising due to the special circumstances special circumstances like uh, emergence of hung assembly however this discretion recommending the president's rule it is mentioned in the constitution itself right so according to the article 356 the governor can recommend the imposition of president's rule in a particular state the ground is breakdown of constitutional machinery in the particular state so remember this is the ground on which uh, president's uh, rule can be imposed in a state right so special powers during the emergency so once the em emergency is imposed the governor will assume some special powers right <clears throat> even when the emergency is declared according to article 352 that is national emergency so during the nas national emergency also the governor will assume some special powers 
right so to deal with the the governor will assume these special powers to deal with uh, deal with the emergency situation more effectively right these are the emergency powers of the governor next we are we will understand the financial powers of the governor so state budget the governor plays a cru crucial role in the state's financial matters they cause the state budget to be laid before the state legislature right next is approval of money bills so basically money bills which ex exclusively deal with the taxes and basically the items mentioned in the article 110 so right they can only be introduced in the state uh, state legislature through the prior permission permission of the governor right so these are some of the financial powers that is uh, held by the governor <coughs> similarly the governor also has the uh, he is the holder of the contingency contingency fund contingency fund of the state so this is also under the control of the governor so to meet the extraordinary situations unforeseen expenditures for example if a particular disaster happened at uh, uh, in the state so the president can release funds from this contingency contingency fund right <clears throat> now we will try and understand the relations of the governor with the state government so uh, these will uh, these basically will be overlapping with the uh, powers and functions of the governor however we try to briefly understand the relation between the governor and the state government right so council of ministers relation with the council of ministers appointment of councillors ministers we have seen so the governor will appoint the ministers based on the recommendation of the chief minister of the state so this is uh, this is given by article uh, 164 right next is inquiry about the administrative process so the uh, governor can seek information information the governor can seek information from the council of minister that is headed by the chief minister uh, about the administrative aspects administrative aspects of the state right the governor can seek information so basically the council of ministers headed by the chief minister have to inform periodically about the administrative decisions taken by them to the governor however the governor can also inquire about the administrative decisions or measures taken by the government i mean executive uh, that is council of ministers headed by the chief minister next is role in formation of the uh, formation of the government uh, we have understood earlier also appointment of chief minister uh, during uh, basically the leader of the majority party he will be appointed as the chief minister however whenever there is an hung assembly uh, the governor has to appoint that person as a chief minister whom he feels that he can garner the support of the majority uh, of the members of state legislative assembly so this is about the hung assembly so during the uh, his role during the president's rule so right the governor has the power to recommend the president's rule or state uh, emergency in a particular state uh, based on the ground that the constitutional machinery constitutional machinery has broken down in the state right so this is uh, then the the president may impose the president's rule under article 356 Accord, uh, under the constitution so, right next is extension of powers during the president's rule the governor's powers expanded significantly we have understood this one so he start he will start as acting as the representative of the president representative of the president All right during the imposition of emergency he will act as the representative of the president right next is he assumes more direct role more direct role during the uh, uh, in the matters of the administration 
administration. Basically, two advisors, two senior most civil servants, two senior most civil servants will be appointed to aid and advise the governor during the periods of emergency and he will assume more direct role during the operation of emergency, whether it is national emergency or state emergency. So this is some kind of relation, some relation between the governor and the state government, how his uh, role changes uh, according to the situation. Now, now, we will understand the resignation and the removal of the governor. So grounds for removal are, these are not expl uh, openly mentioned in the constitution, not explicitly mentioned in the constitution. Right. So this is also one uh, kind of say uh, dark area or blind area. Earlier also we have seen there is no security of tenure for the governor. So this led to lot of controversies and issues. So, so because uh, this has arisen because there is no particular way or method mentioned for the removal of the governor. So basically, the governor will be removed from uh, removed from the office on the grounds such as misconduct, violation of the constitution, and any other uh, matters of which have serious implications. So, so basically and generally, these are some of the grounds when personal conduct of the govern governor is not up to the mark. Uh, he or she has been removed from the office of the governor. Next is breakdown of relation. This also becomes very, very important aspect for uh, important aspect for removal of the governor. So whenever there is a breakdown of relation between the governor and the state chief minister, breakdown of relation between uh, governor and the state government, or for that matter, governor and the center central also, central government also. So this also becomes a ground for removal of the governor from the office, right? Process of removal, uh, the removal of a governor shall not be a unilateral decision. So basically, this is what the constitution states. It should not be a unilateral decisions. Unilateral decision. So it should, it shall involve a well-defined process. <coughs> basically, the president who appoints the governor, he should initiate the process of removal of the governor. Right. So basically what in practice happens, basically the president act has to act on the aid and advice of the council of ministers. So council of ministers at the center, they uh, have to uh, advise the governor, uh, advise the president uh, that the particular governor of a state has to be removed. Then the president will remove the, that particular governor. Right. Resigning procedure. So basically the governor here, uh, she shall they can themselves, uh, uh, I mean, resign from the position by writing uh, that letter to the president of India. So by uh, writing uh, uh, the resignation letter to the president of India, they can uh, resign from their office. So this is mentioned in article 156 of the constitution. So the resignation takes place once this resignation has been accepted by the president. Right, next is. The governor may uh, choose to resign for personal reasons. This is allowed. So once the particular governor is resign, resigned or removed, a new governor may be appointed uh, in the previous governor's place. So basically, these are some of the aspects about the resignation and the removal of the governor. Right. So we now we will see the some of the uh, one important area, uh, area from where the question may come, uh, this is about the disc exercise of discretionary power of the governor. So, apart from prelims, there is uh, this topic is also very important for mains exam, right? For mains exam also, this area is very, very uh, important. There are a uh, lot of, uh, uh, I mean, controversies taking place. Uh, if we take the examples of Kerala and uh, Kerala, uh, even in Karnataka also, we have seen a lot of uh, developments, Karnataka and in Tamil Nadu also, Tamil Nadu also, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, 
the governors are coming out of their traditional role and they have started acting uh, actively and they are taking some decisions on their own so it uh, led to a tussle between the state government and the governor so we can see those developments uh, <clears throat> so when we discuss the main topics we will try and cover this aspect uh, some more elaborately right so so as we have already understood the governor has some discretionary powers those are arising out of two aspects some are situational and some are given within the constitution right some discretionary powers are given uh, from the constitution itself for example recommending the recommending the govern uh, president's role also the governor sends a report report to the president uh, after every 15 days so the president has to send a report about the administration of the state this is a very secretive report right it is also the discretion of the governor he keeps on sending report about the developments in the state administrative aspects in the state for every 15 days to the president so this is also discretionary power of the uh, governor so basically the sources of discretion are one uh, one special situations or circumstances second one is uh, they are mentioned in the constitution itself right <clears throat> so discretion we have uh, uh, earlier seen about this so when hung assembly is there and no pol political party is wielding majority in the state legislative assembly uh, then the discretion of the governor uh, becomes very very important and uh, a particular candidate chosen by the center i mean the political i mean the uh, ruling party at the center so that particular person belonging to that particular party has been chosen and appointed as the chief minister this has led to lot of controversies similarly uh in this uh, i mean during this situations the governor's uh, discretion becomes very very important and also it led to lot of controversies similarly dismissal uh, dismissal of the existing uh, the i mean existing governments at the state level so when dismissing the governor uh, sorry when discussing uh, uh, dismissing a government the discretion of the governor becomes very very important so the governor has the power to dismiss a government because the government serves during the pleasure of the governor pleasure of the governor so basic uh, principle is as long as the <coughs> state government holds or has the support of the lower house the, it should uh, it cannot be removed however uh, over time we can see the existing state governments have been dismissed on very flimsy grounds like uh, based on corruption corruption so it uh, because it belong to the different party different political party different political party to that of the party existing at the central level so during we can see during the uh, prime ministership of mrs gandhi many state governments have been dis, uh, dismissed on flimsy flimsy grounds because uh, only reason that they belong to different political party similarly uh, when janata government came to power so janata government came to power after the loss of mrs uh, mrs indira gandhi so uh, the janata government also did the same thing it dismissed all the i mean uh, state governments which is which uh, belong which are belonging to different political party so this kind of uh, thing happened during it was very famous during 1970s and uh, 1980s so recently nowadays it has come down but still there is lot of controversies uh, some state governments we have st uh, we have seen the example of maharashtra the saga is still going on example of maharashtra and this has also happened in some northeastern states like arunal arunachal pradesh so there are many number of examples where the existing governments have been dismissed and uh, the uh, party supported by the uh, ruling party at the center that has been appointed 
to form the i mean uh, the person appointed as the chief minister and that particular party has been allowed to form the government at the state level right so similarly uh, when when it comes to dissolution of state assembly also there are lot of controversies so the major practice is according to the british uh, i mean british practice so from where we have taken the principle of parliamentary democracy <coughs> the king uh, be, there in the britain the king will dismiss the uh, the house of uh, house of commons only on the advice of the uh, prime minister british prime minister so this shall be the practice uh, in our uh, country also at the central level the president has to dismiss the uh, lok sabha on the advice of the prime minister similarly at the state level the government uh, the governor has to dismiss the state legislative assembly only based on the recommendation of the chief minister so this practice has also not been followed so this also led to lot of uh, controversies right so when this practice is adopted and followed it will help in maintaining the uh, democratic fabric of the country so similarly the controversies about the governor's power are when he recommends the emergency right so do, uh, based on the article 356 so right whenever he advises the president he should be judiciously exercise that power i mean he should take all the facts into consideration into consideration so this will lead to the safeguarding the democratic fabric of the country right so he should basically avoid biased decisions right so he or she should be uh, should understand that his or her position only ceremonial position ceremonial position and he is only de jure authority right and uh, the state government or council of ministers headed by chief minister this is the de facto authority authority at the uh state level because this council of ministers headed by the chief minister is popularly elected and not the governor governor is only appointed so the governor should realize and accept this fact and he should be uh i mean following the aid and advice of the uh, council of ministers headed by the chief ministers and he should not interfere in the daily activities of the state so then the democratic fabric of the state and also the country will be safeguarded so these are some of the recommendations we will see some other recommendations given by both sarkaria commission and punje commission uh, for this aspect right <clears throat> so we will also briefly survey the special powers that are given to the governor one is when it comes to hung assembly what are the powers he has so he basically has the option of appointing the chief ministers appointing the chief minister this is also special occasion so basically it led to lot of controversy so there is uh, critics are asking for for a standard operating procedure it should be a convention should be laid uh, laid down that how the chief minister has to be selected whenever there is a hung assembly like first the person the leader belonging to largest party person belonging to largest party first he should be given the option then the person uh, holding the support of the majority of the member even they are coming from different political parties so basically the person coming from an alliance pre poll alliance he should be given importance next the person coming or holding the majority i mean maximum number of uh, people uh from the alliance which is formed after the elections so kind of the critics are experts constitutional experts asking for a procedure to be followed when the hung assembly has been uh, realized or formed right <clears throat> similarly role during the president's rule so we have already understood that the government governor assumes very uh, important and kind of direct his direct involvement in the day to day administration increases uh, many fold during the emergency whether it is national emergency or state emergency similarly uh, uh, special powers during the constitutional breakdown that is 
uh, during the state emergency he can recommend through a secret report to the president that uh, the president's rules has to be imposed in the particular state <coughs> all right so this uh, special powers may be may vary based on the nature and severity of the crisis so basically these are some of the special powers that are wielded by the office of the uh, by the governor in a particular state so uh, now we have understood there are lot of controversies associated with the uh, position of the governor especially when it comes to exercising the discretionary powers discretionary powers so why uh, it has uh, i mean it has uh, become controversy because he has to act he has to act according to the uh, interest of the uh, ruling party at the center ruling party of the center because basically uh, the governor is appointed by the president president and uh, the president is actively aided and advised by advised by the council of ministers at the central level so basically the indirectly the appointment of the governor is controlled by the uh, central government similarly uh, similarly his removal also the governor's appointment and the removal are uh, practically controlled by the government at the center so basically the governor is expected to uh, support the interest of the central government so basically he ends up acting as the agent of the agent of the center at the state level so because of this and he do not have the security of tenure security of tenure is not there for the governor so as and when the president i mean he serves during the pleasure of the president that is effectively during the pleasure of the central government so because of all these reasons uh, the governor ends up acting as the agent uh, agent of the center at the state level so he has to fulfill some of the demands indirect demands of the central government so because of these reasons uh, i mean the the position of the gover governor has assumed a lot of uh, significance so uh, there are a lot of controversies to address these uh, these controversies many committees have given their recommendations recommendations to improve the position of the office of governor and to restore the decorum of the office of the governor so one such uh, there are many committees including administrative reform uh, reforms committee uh, sarkaria commission is there and also we have punchi commission and we have also uh, recommendations of the second administrative reforms commission now here we will see the uh, recommendations of two important committees which have been uh, appointed to improve the center state relations so uh, the position of office of the governor is the most important point or controversial point when it comes to the relations between the center and states so uh, we will try and understand the recommendations of these two commission uh, commissions so first is sarkaria commission it is appointed uh, in uh, 1980 i mean it has given its recommendations in 1988 the recommendations are about the appointment of governor so basically appointment after only after consultations with the chief minister of the state so whenever a governor is being appointed to the a particular state the chief minister of that particular state has to be consulted once so this ensures that there are cordial relations cordial relations between the governor and the chief minister next governor should be eminent in some walk of life and uh, from outside he should be from outside the state so he should be eminent he should be a eminent personality in some walk of life in some area for example uh, uh, if we see abdul kalam uh, though he is the president of india he was uh, he achieved excellence in his uh, area domain so that kind of personality should be appointed and considered for the appointment of uh, governor also and uh, similarly he should be outside of the state then he sh his interference in the governance or politics will be less and controlled next the person should be a detached figure without intense political links or recent political involvement so basically he should be detached from the political aspects he should not have any active interest in the politics all right 
right the person should not be from a uh, mem- uh, should not be a member of the ruling party at the center so this will also if if he is from the ruling party at the center he, he also starts involving actively in the inter- he starts interfering in the administrative aspects of the state this will also also lead to problems so because of this reason he should not be from the uh, ruling party similarly uh, the recommendations about the removal of the governor so basically uh, the removal before the completion of tenure only on the grounds related to morality dignity and constitutional propriety so only these grounds should be uh, based for the removal of the governor uh, before the completion of the tenure that is 5 years uh, so the state governments also should be consulted and informed about the removal process so this will reduce the scope of conflicts similarly about the article 356 that is president's rule so this is also here also the, the governor plays very important role he sends the report about imposing the president's rule so it is used the committee said that the uh, sarkaria commission said that uh, the article should be o- used only sparingly and as a last resort right this is the recommendation of the sarkaria commission uh, when it comes to using the article 356 and imposing the president's rule in the state right now we will understand the recommendations of the punchi commission this is also one important commission when it comes to center state relations right it has also given some important recommendation when it comes to office of the governor right governors has to have a fixed term of 5 years right the removal should be through impeachment process the com- uh, committee is recommending that the commission is recommending that there should be an impeachment process similar to that of the president of india the president can be removed only through the impeachment process so the punchi commission is recommending that the governor should also be removed only through the process of impeachment right next is reiterated it reiterated the sarkaria commission's recommendations uh, on the appointment of uh, governors so basically the recommendations are like he should be from a uh, different political party i mean he should not be uh, Uh, hailing from the same political pa- party and he should achieve some excellence in some walk of life and he should not take active interest in the politics etc and he should be a detached figure so basically the sarka uh, the punchi commission has reiterated the recommendations of the sarkaria commission next is uh, suggested ending the convention of making governors chancellors of universities so as you all know the governor is the act as the chancellor chancellor of state universities so you um, you can see in avades in news lot of uh, developments uh, associated with this aspect also as the chancellors de facto i mean as the ex officio chancellors ex officio chancellors of the uh, universities the governors have taken some, uh, some controversial uh, decisions and uh, controversial decisions so in states like um, tamil nadu and uh, kerala so you can also see that it is also leading to some uh, controversies so the commission has recommended that uh, we should end this practice of making governors as the chancellors of uh, universities next is uh proposed amending article 355 and 356 uh to allow union government to bring specific troubled areas under its rule for a limited period instead of whole state so basically whenever the state uh, i mean state emergency or president's rule is imposing imposed so instead of bringing all uh, entire territory of the state under president or the uh, under the emergency only certain area Uh, in which in where the disturbances are occurring that particular area uh, shall be considered for imposing emergency so basically the committee is recommending localized emergency right so this will prevent dismissing the state government 
right so in this way tussle between the center and the states can be reduced so these are some of the important recommendations given by the Sir, uh, punchi commission now we will understand some comparison between the president and the office of the governor so <clears throat> there are in the past uh, many number of questions comparing these two positions so we will see some uh, briefly some of the important comparisons between the office of the governor and the president so appointment uh, the governor is appointed by the president of india however uh, the president is elected by the electoral college consisted of elected elected members of uh, parliament and elected members of state legislative assembly executive powers so governor acts as the executive head of the state similarly uh, the president acts uh, acts as the head of the uh, union acts as the head of the union government right next is legislative powers the governor can summon prorogue and uh, pro summon and prorogue the state legislature and also he can dissolve the state uh, legislative assembly on the advice of the chief minister so the president also have the similar powers he can summon and uh, summon and prorogue the uh, uh, parliament and he can also dissolve the lok sabha on the recommendation of the prime minister next is emergency powers he can recommend the governor can recommend the uh, president's rule according to the article 356 whenever there is a breakdown of constitutional machinery in a particular state so uh, similarly the president can uh, can proclaim the uh, national emergency under article 352 so whenever he feels that there is a grave threat to the security of india or for any of its states next for is role in the formation of the government so we have understood he appoints the governor appoints the chief minister and also the council of ministers on the advice of the chief minister similarly the president also appoints the prime minister and based on the advice of the prime minister he appoints the rest of the council of ministers constitutional position so he is the constitutional head in the state governor is the constitutional head in the state similarly the president is the constitutional head of the nation or union government <coughs> tenure so basically the tenure is five years however he can i mean he serves the uh, tenure during the pleasure of the president right which generally the president holds the office for a term of five years this is the general rule so removal he can be removed by the president on the aid and advice of the council of ministers the governor can be removed by the president similarly <clears throat> so this is a different uh, different aspect when it comes to president president can only removed by the process of impeachment by passing a resolution with special majority by the parliament so this is a brief and a small comparison about the office of the governor and office of the president so try to remember these aspects also there is a chance of a question coming from this area comparison of the president and the governor right now we will see uh, some of the uh, previous uh, some of the questions that are asked previously in the prelims examination first question it is asked in 2018 <laughs> consider the following statement statement one is <clears throat> no criminal proceeding shall be instituted against the governor of a state in any court during the during his term of office second one is the emoluments and allowances of the governor of a state shall not be diminished during the during his term of office so this is correct no criminal proceedings shall be initiated against the governor during uh, i mean during the period of uh, whenever he holds the office so no criminal um, i mean no uh, criminal proceedings can be initiated ag initiated against the governor uh, civil proceedings can be initiated with the serving the notice of 14 days so after serving the notice day, uh, noti uh, 14 days uh, uh, notice the civil proceedings can be initiated against the governor however no criminal proceeding shall be initiated Similarly, so this statement become uh, statement becomes correct, and the second statement, the emoluments and uh, the service conditions cannot be reduced during the tenure of the governor. So this is to give some independence to the governor. 
some independence to uh, uh, give, uh, to give some independence to governor so this statement is also correct so both uh, statement 1 and statement 2 are correct next is uh, this is asked in 2014 which of the following are discretionary powers given to the governor of a state so statement 1 sending a report to the president of india for imposing president's rule right appointing ministers third one is reserving certain bills passed by the state legislature state legislature for consideration of the president of india next is making the rules to conduct the business of the state government so here we can see sending a report to the president of india for imposing of uh, emergency this is the discretionary power similarly appointment of ministers so he appoints the ministers but this is not the discretionary power he appoints the ministers only on the recommendation of the chief minister so this is certainly the power of governor but this is not the uh, discretionary power so this is uh, a wrong statement uh, reserving certain bills passed by the state legislature for consideration of president of india so this is also correct this is the discretionary power power, power of the governor he can reserve a bill passed by the state legislature for consideration of the president so this is the correct statement <coughs> uh, similarly fourth option making rules to conduct business of the state government so this is also correct the governor can make rules to conduct the administration of the state but this is not the discretionary power this is not discretionary power this is only normal power so basically what are the discretionary powers one and three so uh, correct option is option b right last question it is asked in 2013 which of the following statements is correct with respect to the governor the first statement is in india the same person cannot be appointed as a governor for two or more states at the same time so in the beginning of the uh, in this lecture itself we have seen uh, same person can be appointed as the governor for two or more states there is an option so this is a uh, wrong statement secondly judges of the high court of the states in india are appointed by the governor of a state just as the judges of the supreme court are appointed by the president so this is also wrong statement because the judges of the high court also appointed by the president not by the governor so try to remember this uh, difference so this is a very confusing area try to focus uh, these type of areas so judges of the supreme court uh, along with the judges of the supreme court the judges of the high court also appointed by the president not by the governor right option d in case of union territory having a legislative setup the chief minister is appointed by the lieutenant governor on the basis of majority support so this is also incorrect statement the chief minister of union territory if they have a chief minister so basically we have two famous examples puducherry and the delhi nct delhi so the chief minister is appointed by the president not by the lieutenant governor so whenever uh, the assembly of uh, jammu and kashmir also forms and uh, the chief minister have to be elected that part uh, that particular chief minister will also be appointed by the president not by the lieutenant governor so this option d is also incorrect so the option c no procedure has been laid down in the constitution of india for removal of a governor from his or her post so we have studied already so there is no particular position uh, when it comes to the removal of the governor it is any particular procedure is mentioned in the constitution right so option c becomes correct here right so this is uh, this is uh, all all about today so i hope you have gained some uh, valuable and important information uh, thank you for joining the lecture thank you see you next time bye